Welcome back to Milan Recording Studios. My name is James Pavel Shakras, and in today's video, we are here in Studio B doing a very in-depth and complicated video with three incredible digital pianos, and you can see them behind me over here. You've got the Viscount Legend 70s, you've got the Krumar 7, and you've got the Korg SV2, which is behind me somewhere right around here. Um, so we've got three incredible digital pianos that all have one thing in common. All three of these, and the name is quite evident, and actually all three of them, Legend 70s, the Krumar 7, 770s and the stage vintage 2 the Korg SV2 these are all meant to emulate various vintage stage pianos and home pianos from the 1970s and beyond, and some a little bit before as well. So you have famous sounds like the Fender Rhodes and the Wurlitzer. Um, the SV2 has, actually all three of them have clavinet sounds. The SV2 has some additional like Mellotron sort of st uh, string sounds and stuff too a honer pianet and things like that all three of these do stage vintage type sounds and other sorts of sounds too so we're going to be checking these three instruments out and these are some of the most highly requested digital pianos that i have had like that I've reviewed ever so far. I've had lots of people asking me to do a comparison between the Korg SV2 and the Krumar 7 and between the Krumar 7 and the Viscount Legend 70s and the Legend 70s between the Korg SV2. So I decided to lump all three together in one video and make a huge long video about this all, all at once. It's going to be awesome. Now, before we dive into today's video, which is going to be very fun, I definitely hope you all enjoy it, I wanted to answer a couple of questions that I often get about the channel and things like that. And one of them is, how is all of this stuff afforded? Uh, if any of you know anything about digital pianos and you've done any research about the Kumar 7 and the Korg SV2, you'll know that those are very expensive, and so is the Legend 70s. For starters, Legend 70 was actually sent to me by Viscount, which is awesome, but of course, I'm going to be doing a completely unbiased review, and it's going to be completely honest, just like the other two will be too. But one thing you got to know is that some of the equipment that's in today's video has actually been in the family for 45 years. Of course, that's not the digital pianos. Those are all new. Um, but some of the equipment in today's video has been in the family for 45 years. Um, so not everything you're seeing here has been purchased recently. Um, but the more important thing is that all the money that is earned via the ad revenue on this channel goes back into the channel. Every single penny that is earned through ad revenue goes back into the channel to purchase things like the Korg SV2 and the the Krumar 7 and much of the other equipment that has that is being used in today's video. I also wanted to mention that I've got a Patreon uh, account if you guys want to go join that and help me out in the channel and help promote and help me create videos like this in the future that is going to be a massive massive help so thank you to anyone who wants to do that. The last thing I wanted to talk about is the list of all the equipment being used in today's video because there is a lot of it. First of all, obviously, the three digital pianos, Legend 70s, SV2, uh, and the Krumar 7. There's also four vintage Gitzo tripods, which are holding the cameras. You've got uh, four different cameras. You've got three over here and one over here. Uh, there's actually th uh, four high-end Neumann mics that are capturing my voice. There's three mic booms that are holding the Neumann mics above where my face is going to be for when I'm sitting at those digital pianos and talking about them. Um, all of these uh, instruments, as well as my voice, is running into a 56-channel mixer that's going to be combining all of the sounds from everything. We've also got two snakes for the uh, inputs and outputs because we don't actually have enough space in Studio A to do this grand of a setup. So what we've done is we are running the snakes over into Studio A to be able to run that into the mixer. Now, also in the signal path for my voice and my voice only are vintage Ampex preamps and also a uh, uh, Universal Audio LA-2A compressor, which is only being applied to my voice, not the digital pianos. And we're not using any EQ on the mixer for any of the digital pianos. And uh, although they do have built-in EQs, I probably won't be messing with those very much because honestly, the sounds in these are almost always so good that I rarely find the need to tweak and mess around with the EQ or other settings. Occasionally I do, but not very often. And with that, I think it's about time to dive into this awesome video between the Viscount Legend 70s, the Krumar 7, and the Korg SV2. Let's get into it. So here we are sitting at the Viscount Legend 70s first, and what I'm going to be doing is first off starting with all of the physical differences and features of these instruments. So first I'm going to tell you all about the physical features and qualities of the Legend 70s, then we're going to move on to the Krumar 7, which is sitting right over here off camera, and then we're going to move, once we're done talking about that, we're going to move on to the Korg SV2, and once we're done talking about all the physical features of that, we're going to come back to the Viscount Legend 70s and begin talking about the sounds and the really cool things that this instrument can do. 
So first of all, the physical features. What is the Viscount 70s like? Well, for starters, the build quality is very, very nice, and there's a number of really nice things about it. First of all, your top part here is made of metal. The underside here, I'm actually not exactly sure what it is. I think it's solid plastic. The sides here are a nice solid plastic, and the build of the instrument overall is very, very solid and sturdy. But the biggest claim to fame of the Viscount Legend 70s is its modular design. On a typical digital piano, whatever the user interface is, is like that forever. You can't do anything thing about where things are located. But on the Viscount Legend 70s, this here is your electric piano section, and if I wanted that to be on the end of the instrument, all I'd have to do is unscrew these four screws, and essentially with the instrument unpowered, I'd be able to take out this module and put it over here. And I could take this module and put it over here. Um, and so it's really, really brilliant. You can move all sorts of different modules around, and when you buy one of these new, it actually won't come with a couple of these modules. It will come with the electric piano module and the sound collection module, I believe. Um, the clavinet and the acoustic piano, I think, are the ones that are optional, and there's also an additional optional module, a couple of additional optional modules um, that you can buy as well. So it's kind of neat that if you don't want a particular type of sound, you don't actually have to pay for that type of sound. If you're never going to use the clavinet sound in any of your music ever, you don't actually have to pay for it in the instrument, which is kind of a cool approach, and I think that's really, really neat. On top of that, the user interface of this instrument, although complex and can do a lot of things, is still incredibly, incredibly intuitive. All of the knobs and buttons have a really nice quality feel to them, and uh, it's honestly all really, really lovely. As far as the things it comes with, this instrument comes with a music stand, and it comes with a damper pedal, and of course the power supply as well. The damper pedal for the Viscount Legend 70s is quite adequate. I have no problems with it at all, and it's really, really great. Um, and it even has a polarity switch on the side, which is very handy. Something else I thought I'd talk about with the Legend 70s is the owner's manual. Um, I don't usually talk about owner's manuals in my videos, but the one that comes with the Legend 70s is honestly something quite special. Um, it feels incredibly high quality. Um, um, and the, as you can see, it's very, very thick, and it goes into everything this instrument can do in incredible detail, and it's so well written, it's so well done, it's probably my favorite owner's manual that I've ever seen come with certainly any digital piano and possibly any product ever. It's a really, really amazing owner's manual. Now, as you can see here on the cover here, there are actually three different trim models, I suppose you could say, of the Legend 70s. You have the Artist W, which is an 88 key model. That's the one that's featured here on the cover of the owner's manual. It's the Artist W that has the wooden keys. That's what the W stands for. You also have the Artist model, which is 88 keys without the wooden keys. And you have the Compact model, which is this. So the Artist and the Compact use the same action. The Artist W uses an upgraded action. As far as the action is concerned on the Viscount Legend 70s Compact, it is really fantastic. It has kind of a feel of almost like an electric piano. I had someone ask me the other day, um, and that may seem like an obvious statement, but let me let me continue here. I know that seemed like a really redundant statement. Someone asked me the other day um, what I thought of the difference between the action of the Kawhi MP11 SE and the action of, I think it was the Legend 70s. Um, and I said that they're both really good actions, but the Kawhi MP11 is geared towards a pianist, whereas the Legend 70s is geared more towards an electric pianist, because the action in this is very reminiscent of what you might find in a Fender Rhodes. It really has that kind of that clunky feel to it. And when I say clunky, that normally has negative connotations, but with this action, it really doesn't. Uh, it feels really, really nice. It feels substantial. It feels satisfying to dig into it and play, just like a real Rhodes would. And as a whole, it is a fantastic action. And although it's meant to emulate the feel of a Fender Rhodes, it really doesn't have any of some of the negative uh, aspects that some Rhodes have, like the really difficult to play action that you'll find in some Rhodes. This is not difficult to play. You can play quickly and delicately and fast on it with no problems whatsoever. The playing experience on this instrument is honestly delightful. You have a pitch bend and mod wheel here, which is something we won't be seeing in either of the other two instruments. Honestly, I don't use these very much, but for those people who do use these, the Legend 70s has them, which is really, really nice. Um, something else I thought I'd mention is that the Legend 70s has a built-in stand. I believe it's an optional extra, although I'm not 100% sure about that, but nonetheless, the built-in stand is really, really amazing. So much like many digital pianos, this stage piano can come away from its stand. So if you wanted to use this instrument on its own separate stand and use it in like a stacked system and put it in a type of stand where you can have a second tier of keyboards above it, you could do that, or you could have it on its own 
own proprietary stand, which is amazing, by the way. It's really, really solid. You can see when I apply pressure on it from the right, you can see that it doesn't really move at all. And I'm applying a pretty good amount of pressure to try to make it move and wobble, and it really isn't moving very much at all. Also, when I push it front to back, it doesn't really want to move at all. These legs are thick, they are stout, and they are just really great for holding up the instrument. They also allow you to put the instrument a little bit closer to the wall. This instrument actually has a pretty compact uh, form factor um, as far as like the surface area that it covers, especially because it's got the uh, the 73 keys, but also just because it's not very wide from front to back, if that makes sense. You can put it right up against the wall, which would be important for those of you who want to keep it at home, and also it's going to take up less stage, less stage room, um, which might be important if you're playing at a small venue that has a small stage. The final thing I wanted to mention here is the um, music desk that it comes with, which is really nice. It's metal, and it sits right here in two little holes here, and it's very easily removable. The other nice thing here is that you got a completely flat top here, um, which is great. So if you wanted to put a second instrument, just put that right on top. If you wanted to put your computer up here, what have you, um, you can do that, and you can easily remove the music desk to give you a lot more surface area than if it was sitting here. So the music desk is great. The flat top of this instrument is also really great, and the um, visual aesthetic of the Viscount Legend 70s is just absolutely fantastic and it looks really great, and it's really great to play on, which we'll get to in a bit here. But now I think it's time to move on to talking about the aspects of the Krumar 7. Let's do that. So this is the Krumar 7, and if you've never seen one before, bask in its glory, because I think it looks absolutely fantastic. There's a few things I like about the Krumar 7 visually uh, and physically, and one of those is the visual aesthetic. I really love the way they've blended the 1970s with the 2020s, um, because you have the cool LED lights that will actually change very subtly as you move these knobs. Green means it's at its minimum setting, and as I turn this knob, it's going to slowly fade into red, as you can see. So now it's at its max setting, and these ones here that are kind of purpley, lavender color, will fade to blue as I turn them down to their minimum setting. Um, and so you've got the cool LED lights, but there's also been a lot of attention to detail, making this instrument be very reminiscent of the 1970s era um, Fender Rhodes stage model. One thing, for example, that makes this instrument to me reminiscent of the Fender Rhodes is the case. It's actually built in to its case right now. You don't need an optional soft cover like the Viscount Legend 70s would, or an optional hard cover if you wanted to go that route. This instrument is built into its hard case, and there's actually a top that I mentioned in my full review of the Krumar 7 um, that you can actually put on the top with these little half hinges back here, just like the original Fender Rhodes would have, and then that will hinge down and close over the top, and you can latch it closed, and there's a handle on the front that makes it nice, safe, and secure. Um, however, this is not a flight case, it is just simply a protective hard case, and Krumar mentions this in their owner's manual. Now, you remember the manual for the Legend 70s, we just talked about that. This is the manual for the Kumar 7. Yeah, it's one paper. This back part here is how to use it, and this front part here is safety information, warranties, and then this is where they're talking about the uh, hard case not being a flight case. Um, so literally one half of a page is all you need to know to be able to operate the Kumar 7, which in one way you could look at that as being an amazing benefit of the Kumar 7, that it's so incredibly simple. Um, but also that simplicity is kind of a little bit of a double-edged sword because it cannot do anywhere near as many things as the Vicar. Count Legend 70s can. Having said that, what the Krumar 7 can do, it does quite well, and we'll take a look at that, but as far as effects and layering and things like that, you can't put as many things onto a sound in the Krumar 7 as you can with the Le uh, Legend 70s. The build quality as a whole of the uh, Krumar 7 is fantastic. You've got this metal top up here. You have the wooden case, as we've already mentioned. You have these metal legs that, like on the original stage roads, actually screw into the underside of the instrument, whereas on the Legend 70s, it's a separate stand that the, um, the instrument will mount to with some large, um, like, screw-type knobs. Um, the, the stability of this instrument is not quite as solid as the Legend 70s. The front-to-back stability is fine when you're performing. You can see it's got a little bit of a flex, but when you're actually playing the instrument, um, that's not really going to be much of a problem. However, when it comes to the left-to-right stability, I'm hardly touching it at all, and you can see that it's, it's wobbling back and forth pretty significantly. Now, when you're performing, that won't be too much of a problem, but if somebody accidentally bumps into your instrument, it's going to go 
go wobbling a lot. And I'm not exactly sure what's causing this stability. It could be something to do with the way the uh, legs are screwed into the underside of the instrument. But I think it's really because the legs, I think you can see this one over here, right? Can you see this leg? It's a little bit thinner than on the uh, Legend 70s. And I think they're a tiny bit longer too, although that could be an illusion because they're thinner. Nonetheless, the Kumar 7 is still relatively stable, just not quite as stable as the um, Viscount Legend 70s. The damper pedal that the instrument comes with is also quite suitable. It has a polarity switch and as a whole almost feels identical to the one that comes with the Legend 70s. And finally, the action, I don't think I touched on that. It feels amazing on the Kumar 7. It really, really does. Much like the Viscount Legend 70s, I believe they're using the same type of action, if not the same one, a very similar one, because they both have the same type of feel. A kind of a clunky, chunky, heavy, substantial, but also, very importantly, very um, responsive and uh, delicate and quick as well. They both feel kind of the same way. Um, and both of them are very pleasant to play on. The Kumar 7 is a little bit more heavy and a little bit more substantial, which makes it even more satisfying uh, to play it. When you dig into it, it really feels satisfying and it's just great. It feels really fantastic to play. The only negative about the action in the Kumar 7 is that as you move in towards the back of the key, the action will get a little bit heavier, making it not quite as ideal for classical and even for some jazz, um, but if you just kind of power through it, you can get through it. Someone asked me, uh, again, the difference between the MP11 and an instrument like this, and that's one of the big differences. You wouldn't find that action getting heavier in towards the back on the MP11. That, I think, is just about everything I wanted to mention about with the Kumar 7, besides the one very important thing that both the Kumar 7 and the Viscount Legend 70s are actually hand-built in Italy, which is a really cool thing, and it's not something you see often in the digital piano world, and that, I think, is one more reason the Kumar 7 and the Legend 70s are awesome. But let's move on to the also super awesome Korg SV2 and talk about its physical aspects. So this is the Korg SV2. Now an important thing to note is that Korg makes a few different versions of the SV2, kind of like how Viscount makes several versions of the Legend 70s. Krumar only makes one version of the 7, however. So you have the 88 key version of the SV2 and the 73 key version. I have the 88 key version, and Korg also makes a couple of different models, one with speakers and one without. This is the SV2S, and the S stands for speakers, and you can kind of see the speaker grills here. So there's one set of speakers here and one set of speakers here, and this is one of the bigger differences of the Korg SV2 compared to the others in this lineup, that the SV2 has the option of coming with built-in speakers, and although these aren't the best speakers, they certainly are quite accurate to the tones that this instrument produces. They do a pretty good job of representing them accurately, um, and although there isn't a lot of bass that you'll get out of these speakers, they do a fine job for home use, and honestly, I find myself using them a lot more than I had originally thought I would when I bought the instrument. Once again, you can see here that although the case of the instrument isn't really all that 1970s, the front panel where you use the instrument is very 1970s. We have these same sort of buttons. They're a different type of button, but they're the same shape uh, that we've seen on both the uh, Krumer 7 and the Viscount Legend 70s. And these knobs here are very reminiscent of a lot of electronic equipment you would have seen back in the 1970s. Uh, synthesizers come to mind to me first. You'll see these type of silver and black knobs very commonly on those. So, and also something interesting about the SV2 is that you have this vacuum tube um, that's in here that is, um, according to Korg, will help warm up the tone and give it a more vintage gritty sound. Um, so that is another interesting thing that makes this rather unique. Something else about this instrument is that it's a lot more compact than the other two. Part of the reason the 7 and the Legend 70s look really cool is because they're really flat, really wide keyboards from the front of the keys to the back of the instrument is very, very wide which means they do take up a little bit more space um, on the stage or in the home than this instrument does. It's actually very slim front to back. And although this instrument is a little bit heavier than the other two because of the built-in speakers, it is more compact, so there is that. As you can see, the Korg SV2 comes with a music desk, which just kind of pops off like so very nicely. Um, the music desk on here is okay. It's made of plastic, unlike the Legend 70s, which was made of metal. And it would be perhaps kind of cool if music desk was a little bit more fr um, frontly oriented, if that makes sense. If, if it was brought up to the front of the instrument, so if these mounting holes were here, perhaps, it would not only bring the music closer to the performer, but also would even more uh, make the instrument even more compact because this music desk kind of sticks out from the back of the instrument just a little bit. 
The pedal that comes with the Korg SV2 is okay. It is of a similar build quality to the others, but it doesn't actually have a polarity switch. Um, so the other two are actually a little bit more versatile if you needed to use a damper pedal with a different instrument. The action of the Korg SV2, unlike the Legend 70s and the Kumar 7, is more geared towards feeling like a piano. Um, I can't really say that it feels like a piano. Very few, if any, digital piano actions feel like a piano. But some come pretty close and you're able to play pianistically on them, and this is certainly one of them. Um, it is an excellent action to play on, and I have honestly no real fault with it whatsoever. Uh, it's a brilliant action to play on, and I really, really enjoy playing it. It works really well for all sorts of different types of music as well. You can play classical on it, you can play rock, jazz, blues, whatever. It's all going to work great on the RH3 action, which is different, by the way, from Kawai's RH3 action. Same name, completely different action. So the Korg SV2 as a whole is a very well-built instrument. You'll also notice that the build quality of it feels a little bit more sturdy in a way than the 7 and the, um, the 70s. This top part here is just like the solid chunk of metal. The front part here is also a solid chunk of metal. This bit here is a solid chunk of metal, and the underside of it is a solid chunk of um, uh, particle board. However, that also makes this instrument very dense and very heavy, so for someone who's looking for an instrument that's light and easily portable, especially the speaker version of the SV2, perhaps isn't your best option. The 7, although it looks heavy, and the, the Legend 70 is, although they look very heavy, they're actually not as heavy, anywhere near as heavy as they look. Every time I go to move them, I'm like, oh wow, it's so light. Whereas this one, every time I go to move it, I'm like, oh my goodness, it's so heavy. Um, so that is perhaps a negative side of the Korg SV2, but I think the things it can do and the, the playing um, features of the instrument really make up for its heaviness. That, I believe, is everything there is to mention about these, although I do have to say that the SV2 does not have, as far as I know, any kind of a special dedicated stand specifically for the SV2. It's, in a sense, meant to be a very generically designed instrument in regards to the fact that you can put it on any keyboard stand ever, and it's not meant to work with one specific stand. You can put it on anything and it's going to work very well in that regard, and that regard only. Is it generic? Everything else about it though makes it actually quite special, so I think it's about time to take a look at all three of these and see some of the things they can do and listen to the amazing tones they can produce. Let's go check it out. So here is the Viscount Legend 70s, and what we're going to be doing for each of these instruments in this first part of the video is playing the road sounds and checking out some of the effects that you can apply to the tones. Now for all three of these instruments, all of the effects that are on board the instruments can be applied to any of the tones that you want. I received a question a while ago asking if you could put a chorus effect on the strings pads, and the answer to that is yes. Um, but for now, let's check out the road sounds on the Viscount Legend 70s. There are five of them to choose from. I played the little sounds, the little uh, piece of music there on all of them just to give you a good idea of what they all sound like playing the same piece of music. And that was also with no effects, no reverb, no tremolo, chorus, any of that. But if you wanted to apply an effect, let's go back to the default road sound. Doing, adding, doing so, adding an effect is really quite simple. To add a auto pan, you hit this button right here.
So there's a special button and a special pair of knobs dedicated purely to the auto pan, which is pretty cool. Over here in the effects menu, you also have eight different effects over here that you can route to the road sound, and then now we have a tremolo. But we don't just have one. Uh, tremolo sound. If you push this button in, we now have a bunch of different types of tremolo. Stage tremolo, opto tremolo, 1960s tremolo, light tremolo, wide, stereo pan, slicer tremolo, psych tremolo, 1970s vibrato, modern VBZ. You get the point. We have a whole bunch of different tremolo sounds. The same is true for the chorus effects. If we uh, exit this menu, we go to the chorus button, and we scroll through here, we can see there's a bunch of different chorus sounds. If we exit this menu and do the flanger, you get the point. There's a bunch of different types of each effect and all of them sound dramatically different. So you don't really have eight effects, you have a great many more than eight effects and it gets even better. This little two button here allows you to apply a second effect from this same menu and you can route that anywhere in the instrument. So you can send this second effect to the road sound as well and we can put say for example a chorus on the road sound and effect one is a tremolo like we had before. So now whatever we have here Sounds really good. We can add the tremolo over here. Got three effects running into the um, running into the roads. And the amount of customization and control you have with the sound here and the ease with which you can do it is incredible. And this is one of the reasons why I love the Viscount Legend 70s. It is remarkably easy and the amount of control you have over the sound and the amount of effects you can put on the sounds is insane. Absolutely insane. Um, and that's why my full video, if you're interested, go check it out. But it is over an hour long because there were so many things to talk about with the Legend 70s. But you've heard the road sounds, you've got an idea of some of the effects and what you can do with said effects on the Legend 70s. So let's move on to the Kumar 7 and see what it can do. I did forget to mention though that the uh, Legend 70s does have reverb here. Um, I did not mention that, but we've got some reverbs. <laughs> And just like the effects, you actually have a couple of different variations of each type of reverb. And there's six different sections, and there's a couple of different types of each one in there. So you've got a few reverbs on the Legend 70s too. Now let's actually go to the Viscount. <laughs> So, just like we did for the Viscount Legend 70s, on the Krumar 7, we are going to check out the road sound with no effects. And there is only one road sound on the Krumar 7. Um, earlier, by the way, I misspoke. I said we we're going to go to the Viscount when I meant the Krumar 7. The name 7 and Legend 70s is just really messing with my brain today. Um, comparing these two, I always mix up the names. But we're on the Krumar 7, as you can see here, and we're going to be checking out the one and only road sound. Let's check it out. As you can hear, it sounds really, really nice. I really love the attention to detail that Krumar has put into these low bass notes. When you let go of some of the notes, you have the sound of the felt damper muting the tine, which is a sound you'd get in a real Fender Rhodes. But it's not just copy pasted from note to note, it's unique for each and every single note. These ones up here in the uh, higher ranges are a little different. And then they start getting more plucky in this range. And then they start being a little more vibrate if that makes any sense, uh, more gravelly in this section. Which is a really, really amazing attention to detail and one of the many reasons why the Krumar 7 sounds so good. Now, like the Viscount Legend 70s, we have a few classic types of effects. You've got tremolo, pan, auto wah, and pedal wah, and over here you've got chorus, phaser, flanger, and delay. However, you only have one type of each, and for example, you can't have the tremolo and the auto pan going at once, or you can't have the wah and the auto pan going at once because they're in the same section. You can, however, have the tremolo and the phaser, which is what it defaulted to for some reason. Over here, you can have both of those going at once, and this is what that would sound like. The 
The effects the Krumer has are quite nice, but there aren't as many of them as on the Legend 70s. We've got an auto pan, let me turn off the phaser. You can customize that with this knob here, and uh, which is pretty nice. You've got Waz, and a pedal Waz, which is controlled with an expression pedal. Um, then you have over here your phaser, your flanger, your delay, and your chorus. And again, you can customize the intensity of these with these knobs here, and you have a massive range of customizability, which I think is part of the reason why Krumar didn't put multiple different types of choruses and things of that nature, because you can make them sound quite different just with using these knobs, but the ones over on the Viscount definitely do sound dramatically different when you choose like a slicer tremolo versus a 1960s tremolo, and you can't get that type of variability with the Krumar 7, but the effects it does have are pretty nice. Finally, it has a really lush reverb, and this is probably my favorite thing. One of my favorite things about the Kumar 7 is this amazing reverb. That's just its default setting, but we can crank up those numbers we've got level and decay to play with. Let's tame the level of it down a little bit, and we'll crank up the decay to a ridiculous level, and you'll hear this the most lush reverb I've ever heard a digital piano make. Like, that's quite stunning. That's really, really amazing. So the Krumar 7 doesn't have as many effects as the Legend 70s does, and it only has one type of road sound, but the road sound it has is really good, and the effects that it does have are quite nice. Now it's time to move on to the Korg SV2. So let's do the same Rhodes test on the Korg SV2 as well. I believe we have eight different types of Rhodes sounds here. One, two, three, and four in the electric piano category. One are all Fender Rhodes. If you push this button in, you unlock a second layer of sounds. You can see the light turned green, um, and that will create a second layer of sounds. And I believe all four of those are also Rhodes. Five and six are dedicated to Wurlitzer sounds, and we'll talk about those in a little bit. But for now, let's stick with EP Piano One with no effects and just hear how it sounds. And I'll give you a taste of the others as they come preloaded with various effects. They come with reverbs on, and some of them I think this one comes with a black chorus on, so we'll check those out. Um, but let's start off with the default piano sound. If you can hear that little clicking noise at the end of each note um, attack, that is the same type of sound that the Krumar 7 has in the low bass, but you can hear the reason I made such a big deal about the Krumar 7s, I'm just going to call them clicky noise, it's like the hammer fall back and the damper um, touching the tine, that kind of a sound, it's much better done on the Krumar 7, and the reason I made such a big deal about Krumar not copy pasting that sound is because that's basically what Korg has done here. If you listen to the high treble notes, You'll hear that sound if you listen to the low bass notes. It's a little different, but it's the same idea. Now, you can turn this off by hitting the function button. These two knobs become essentially an EQ for each tone. If you tap and hold this, which is your hammer noise, that will now go away. As you can hear, which is quite nice. But you can hear that that hammer noise isn't quite as well done and as realistic in the Korg as it is in the Krumar 7. Um, so that's one of the reasons why many people love to talk about the Krumar 7 and see how good it sounds, because in many cases it does sound better. So let's check out some of these other um, road sounds here that we have. I'm just going to use the default settings, I'm not going to remove the reverbs and stuff for these other ones. Here's uh, Electric Piano 2. <laughs> As 
you can hear, they all have a slightly different character. Here's number four that comes preloaded with a black chorus. If we go back around to the alternate version of one, alternate two, alternate three, and alternate four. So you got a little look here at some of the effects and the different Rhodes tones of the Korg SV2. Much like the Krumar and the Viscount, you have a few different effects, um, but you don't have quite as much control with those effects as you do with the Viscount and even the Krumar, um, but especially the Viscount Legend 70s. Um, for example, over here we have pre-effects. If we go back to our default Rhodes sound, we have a compressor, we have a treble boost, we have a U-vibe, vibrato, tremolo, which is your auto pan, and your vox wah. Which is my favorite effect on the Korg SV2. I rarely use it in music, but whenever I come up to have some fun, I always will go to the Korg SV2 to check out the vox wah sound. And then you have the modulation effects too, and you can have both of those going at once, but like the uh, Krumar 7, if you wanted to have a tremolo and a vibrato happening at the same time, since they're both found in the um, pre-effect section, you can't have both of them going at the same time. But you can have a vox wah label layered with a small phaser, which doesn't sound that great, so I'm going to turn that off and just focus on the modulation effects. You've got two types of choruses. Two types of phasers, one flanger, and one rotary speaker effect. You'll hear more of the rotary effect when we get into the organs. And you also have some reverbs over here too. Uh, you got six different types. When you crank up the volume in, or the uh, intensity of the reverb, it doesn't get that beautiful ethereal sound that the Krumar 7 does. Instead, you end up with a completely wet signal which isn't the type of sound that I want to hear from a reverb. But you can still get quite a nice effect when you put it at around 5, it still sounds pretty cool. So those are the Rhodes sounds and many of the effects of both the uh, Korg SV2, the Krumar 7, and the Viscount Legend 70s. The last thing I wanted to talk about with the Korg is the amp simulation effect. You heard probably uh, on number four here, when I turned this on, you could hear a little hiss, and when I played, you could hear a little hiss. That's actually the amplifier simulation. Um, pretending to be a hissy old amp, um, basically. So these are meant to em em emulate and imitate um, vintage amps. You've got clean, twin, tweed, AC30, boutique, and organ. And I don't really think they really sound like antique amps, but they definitely do change the color. And you can crank the drive knob way up and get some really crazy distorted sounds, especially with the boutique one. You can crank that up even just to four, and it's going to be wacky. You can get some really screamy sounds out of a beautiful, gentle road sound. This is what it was before. And it became that crazy monstrosity you just heard. And that's something the Korg can do that the Krumar 7 can't really do as well, and the Viscount even can't do it quite as well, although the Viscount does have some pretty gritty organ um, sounds in there too. So that's one special thing the Korg can really do with that Vox Wah and the gritty amps. You can get some really crazy tones and completely dramatically change the sound of the um, instruments. 
But now I think it's time to move on to a different set of sounds, so let's return back to the Viscount and check out something different that it can do. Up next on these three, we have the electric pianos, because although the Legend 70s and the Krumer 7 are shaped like a Fender Rhodes, that isn't the only electric piano tone they can produce. The uh, Legend 70s also has two different Wurlitzer type tones, an electric grand like a CP80 in here, and I believe there's a few others like Yamaha DX type tones hidden away in the sound collection. So we're going to be taking a look at some of these other types of electric piano tones that the Legend 70s, the Krumer 7, and the Korg SV2 can produce. So let's check out the first Wurlitzer tone here, and I'm just going to say straight off the bat that this is by far the best Wurlitzer emulation I have ever heard in any digital piano. I do have a tremolo pre-added here. I made a little preset special for this. Um, I have a little preset here um, that has a tremolo added that makes it sound really, really authentic, but uh, just take a listen. It sounds awesome. To me, it's something about the way the low bass just kind of ages, and as the note decays, it, it changes shape, which is something the Wurlitzer did that just really sounds amazing on this instrument. It's really, really good, and that's not even using the 1970s tremolo that we have in here. Let's try that. That's vibrato. We don't want that. Is there a tremolo in here? I thought there was a 1970s tremolo. I guess there isn't. Wait, 1960s tremolo, there it is. Did that increase the authenticity? Let me know. Because I was just using the default tremolo before. I think whatever tremolo you choose to run it through, though, it still sounds awesome. The second worldly sound is a little more mellow, like a Wurlitzer 200A. It's kind of delicate and warm and really nice. That's really good. Then we also have an electric grand. Let me get rid of the tremolo for now. Um, we also have an electric grand, like a Yamaha CP80 type tone. I don't own and have never really played a original Yamaha CP80, so I can't really say how truly accurate that is, but I do have to say that this type of CP80 sort of sound isn't really my favorite uh, type of keyboard sound. Nothing against the Legend 70s, I just don't personally prefer that sound uh, all that much, um, just CP80s in general. In the uh, sound collection module, we have a couple of others. We've got a Whirly 140B, which is a really mellow. Oh, that's lovely. I love how it's like really gritty and raspy. It's got that built-in tremolo that's really just dirty and awesome. DX Memories. And then a couple of other roads and stuff. Actually, actually, that's a DX2. What else is in here? Crystal EP. And a few other non-electric piano tones are hidden in here too. So we'll keep those for later, um, but those are, I think, most of the... Um most of the electric piano sounds of the Viscount Legend 70s. I keep finding more here in the uh, sound collection module. Those are acoustic pianos. 
Um, so those are all the electric piano sounds in the Legend 70s, aside from the Rhodes. Again, my favorite is just the, uh, the Wurlitzer 200. But that 140B that was in here was also really, really nice. Where was that? Uh, let's get that back up here just to give it to you one more time. Here it is. Really lush and very lo-fi vintage sounding. I like that a lot. Let's move on to the Krumar now and show you some of these uh, other electric piano sounds that it can make. The Krumar 7 and the Korg SV2 have the same basic range of electric piano sounds. You've got a reed sound, you have a electric grand, which is your CP80, you have a DXEP. The Krumar 7 has a special one called the MKSEP, which to my understanding is a, it's like an old Roland synth or something. It sounds really cool, we'll hear that in a bit. But let's start off with the reeds sound here on the Krumar 7 and see how that compares to the Legend 70s. I think it's safe to say that there really is no comparison. One nice attention to detail, though, that Krumar has put in here is that the original Ro uh, Roland, why did I say Roland? The original Wurlitzer 200A bottomed out at a low A. Um, and so as a result, anything below this low A makes no sound, which is a kind of a cool attention to detail. The Electric Grand, although I said I don't really like Yamaha CB80 type sounds, I really do like the one here on the Kumar 7. It's really fat and solid and planted and just somehow it's really satisfying to play. Sounds really cool. We'll skip the clavinet for now. We'll do a comparison on those in a little bit here. We've got DXEPs. Which, this is probably my favorite Yamaha DX sound on any digital piano. It's really beautiful. And when you stack a bunch of reverb on it, oh, it's so lush. Moving on to the MKSEP and rudely interrupting that beautiful reverb, we have this really cool sounding uh, tone with a really nice bass. Wait, what is this? Oh, my bad, I'm on the second bank, so that was definitely not the MKSEP. You have a bank of sounds here, and I have forgotten that I was in that second bank. Uh, on the bank, this, the MKSEP uh, button on bank two is not the MKSEP, it's something different. And there you have it. Those are all of the other electric piano sounds of the Krumar 7. It's quite a simple instrument, but I do have to say that, with the little exception of the reeds tone here, all of the other electric piano sounds in here are really, really solid and sound amazing. And the reeds isn't bad. I just think compared to the Viscount Legend 70s, it pales in comparison. Let's move on now to the Korg SV2, which has quite a few other additional electric piano tones, and we'll check those out too. 
The Korg SV2 has quite a few variants of each type of tone. Um, there's at least four different uh, Wurlitzer 200 sort of tones, but there's actually a couple more because in other categories, there's Wurlitzer 200s layered with synth pads and layered with strings. And there's also a few different variants of the uh, Yamaha uh, DX that are layered with synth pads and layered with strings. And so we'll talk about um, some of the better ones that are here in the Korg. None of them are honestly that terrible, um, but some of them I prefer over others. The four whirly tones here, I'll give you a quick listen to. Uh, number six, the alternate one, the green, number six is my personal favorite, but we'll take a look at all, all four of these. Number six uses the amp simulation effect right here, so that's why you can hear that lo-fi kind of hiss that sounds really interesting. You can just simply switch it off like so, but it does alter the tone and make it sound a little more gritty, which is cool. In E-Piano section two, EP2, we have a few different DXs. Um, like I said, some of them, like I believe uh, one and two alternate are layered with strings. <laughs> What's interesting about the DX sounds in the SV2 is they're really, really aggressive. Like they're super, super punchy and bright when you hit them hard and they just really bark, uh, which is kind of neat. Um, they also sound really fun with the stereo delay too. You can do some crazy stuff here. which is certainly very unusual to say the least. Um, you can, there's a few other different variations of these in here. Those are not even Yamaha DXs. And part of the thing with the SV2 is I'm never certain where anything is um, because there isn't a lot of organization to the tones. For example, right here, I believe this is an acoustic piano. No, not that one. Okay, it's not quite an acoustic piano, but it's not a CP80, and it's not a DX, it's something in between. Layered with a synth, and that's mixed in here. The next one for alternate is a whirly. Layered with a synth, so you've got a lot of different tones that are all kind of blended together. There's a DX with strings. Whirly with strings. A Rhodes with strings, and another DX with strings. So there's multiple variations of all of these. I think this has a CP80 sound somewhere in it. Every now and then I stumble upon it and go, oh, that's where it is, and then I forget where it is. Um, but those are some of the electric pianos that are hidden away in the Korg SV2. They are quite a lot of fun to play with. My personal favorite, though, is that, um, that Whirly Alternate 6 here, the Green 6 one.
Another classic set of tones that the Viscount Legend 70s can produce are those of the classic tone wheel organs, and there are a few different um, versions of that in the Viscount Legend 70s. These organ tones are found in the sound collection module under the organ category. It's very nicely labeled and very intuitive to find and get to, and you can use this knob to scroll through the different organs. There's not a lot to say here with them because honestly, as a whole, they are pretty nice. My only critique would be that the knob to change the rotary speed from slow to fast has a lot of, it has a very wide range of motion to change it from slow to fast. You have to turn it a lot, and I think it would be nice if you didn't have to turn it as much. The knob right to the right of it is turns on and off the rotary effect, and you hardly have to turn that knob at all to switch the rotary effect between on and off, which also means that it's easy to accidentally switch off the rotary effect sometimes on accident. That's really the only critique I have for the organ section as a whole. I think it sounds really nice on the Viscount Legend 70s, and we'll take a listen to it in a minute after I talk about the organ effects on the Krumar 7. And why am I doing that right now? Because it has none. The Although Krumar is very well known for having an excellent clone wheel organ, um, they did not choose to port any of those effects into the Krumar 7, whereas Viscount, who is also well known for having an excellent clone wheel organ, has chosen to port some of those sounds into the Legend 70s, so that's why the Krumar 7 will not be featured in this section of the video featuring the organs. So let's check out the first organ sound of the Legend 70s, which I think is arguably one of the best. It's called Jazz Organ. And I had the rotary effect off for that, so let's turn the rotary effect on and take a listen, because that's really when the organ sound shines. As you can hear, that sounds dramatically different and dramatically better. We also have a few other different types of tone wheel organ sounds in here, like uh, number two, which is even bars. We've got number three, bright organ. And there's a few others in here as well. You've got full bars, gospel organ, lower manual, which is one of my favorites. It's kind of like fat, round, and smooth, and just has a nice sound. You've also got a few combo organ sounds in here. Combo organ 1, 2, and transistor organ. Combo organ 1 is a Vox Continental type of sound. Up next is combo organ 2, which I believe is emulating a Farfisa. And I actually really like that one. It has a very, it's like a darker, grittier kind of Vox Continental tone. Very cool. And then up next is transistor organ, and I'm not really sure what this is emulating, but this is what it sounds like. And finally, the last five in the organ category are um, pipe organ type sounds. So this one here, the one named uh, Bourdon 8, is kind of like a wooden flute sort of a, a pipe sound. It has a very nice sound that again was with no effects. If you put on a little bit of reverb, it can sound a little nicer. But even when it's completely dry with no effects, it still sounds very nice, and the other pipe organ sounds in here are no exception. So the organ sounds in the Viscount Legend 70s are pretty solid, and as a whole are really nice, and I like them. Now it's time to go skip the Krumar 7, because sadly it has no organ sounds, and check out the organ sounds on the uh, Korg SV2. Let's go do that. So here we are at the Korg SV2, and let's check out its six different organ sounds. Oddly enough, there is no special organ section for them. They're lumped in with the clavier section. But nonetheless, here's the first tone wheel organ sound.
also, it's very good. Here is the next one, which comes preloaded with a uh, stereo delay and a little bit of distortion. That sounds pretty cool. Up next is this one. You can really hear that rotary speaker coming into effect. And number five is a Fox Continental type of sound. Um, number six is a two different types of pipe organ, which sound both really, really cool. Like all of the other tones, you can layer any of these effects and anything onto the organ sound. Those are just how they come out of the Korg SV2. And honestly, as a whole, I like them all. I think the tone wheel organs especially, and the transistor, not the transistor, but the uh, combo organ sound, those four especially are really quite solid. All three of these instruments have at least one acoustic piano tone. The Viscount Legend 70s has eight of them. Now, and this is true for all three of these digital pianos, the acoustic piano is not the main focus of these instruments, and so you won't find the same incredible degrees of realism and effort that's gone into the acoustic piano sounds as has gone into the Fender Rhodes sounds and the Whirly sounds and the effects on these instruments. But nonetheless, these acoustic piano sounds certainly would be adequate for playing on stage and things like that. Um, so we will take a look at some of these as well with that kind of approach in mind. Um, to test this, I think I will do a little bit of Scarlatti on these here, and we'll test out a few of the uh, acoustic piano tones on the Legend 70s. Let's start out with the, def with the default one. For the acoustic piano section over here, you have two different knobs that can affect the tone. You have a Dynamics knob and a Brilliance knob over here, so let's check these out. Let's try piano two and play the same excerpt. And here's piano three. After this, I'll just play a few chords on the remaining um, piano tones. Here's piano sound four.
That one's actually really nice. I like Piano 5. The high end is kind of like a digital kind of a sound. And then it kind of merges into a more traditional acoustic piano sound down here. That was piano seven, and finally here's piano eight. Which is a detuned honky-tonk type of tone. If we go back around to piano one here. And do that same sort of arpeggiated chord thing that I was doing for the other sounds. You can hear that there is actually quite a nice attention to detail here with the sympathetic resonance found up here in the treble. That actually sounds very, very nice and quite authentic, if I must say so. That is a very nice attention to detail that I think is one thing that's very nice about the Viscount Legend 70s piano sounds. They're not the main focus of the instrument, but they are definitely adequate. Let's go check out Krumar's sound, however. That's where things get a little bit interesting. Just like all of the other tones on the Krumar 7 that we've heard so far, like the Tines and the Electric Grand, the Acoustic Grand it only has one version. There's only one acoustic piano tone on the entire Kumar 7. So let's have a listen to it and see if it holds up to the extreme quality of the other tones found in the Kumar 7. And as you can hear, it clearly pales in comparison not only to the quality of other tones in the Kumar 7 itself, but also to the acoustic pianos we just got done hearing over on the Viscount Legend 70s. Now, one big thing that everyone is probably saying in the comments right now is that there is an update available for the Kumar 7. They have released a newer version of the acoustic piano. It's called the Venice Grand, and apparently it's a lot better than the original included sound in the Kumar 7. Now, I bought my Kumar 7 uh, eight or so months ago, um, and newer versions of the Kumar 7 may come with the Venice Grand pre-installed. But here's the bigger thing. The updates on the Viscount Legend 70s are super easy to do because it also has some software updates you can do. Um, when I actually received it, Viscount asked me to update the acoustic piano tones as well, and the update for that is super simple. You go to Viscount's website, you download a file, put it on a USB stick, and plug it into the back of the instrument. You then enter a certain menu, push a button, it does the update, and you're done. Now for the Krumar 7, the install process is probably about the same, but the big, big massive difference between the two is that you don't just take a file and stick it onto a USB stick and then do a button combination press and install an update. Instead, for the Krumar 7, you need a special little Wi-Fi dongle that's about a $10 part that you need to order. I found it for sale for like $10.33 uh, from Toman. So you buy that, you put it into the end of the Krumar 7 over here, um, and then that gives the Krumar 7 the ability to access Wi-Fi. From there, you're able to go to the editor, which is a website that you can access through the browser of any device, and then with that, you're able to connect your device to the Krumar 7, download the files, and then install them via Wi-Fi onto the Krumar 7, and that's all well and good. But 
why is that an extra part that A, doesn't come with the Kumar 7 and B, isn't built in? Now, when I say dongle, when I picture a dongle, I think of like a long cable with some kind of a thing on the end that's an adapter, but this is different. This is a little tiny USB plug that just goes into the side of the instrument. So it's like the little metal part that goes into the USB slot and then a little plastic cap on the end of that, and that's it. So it would be incredibly easy to lose. And since it's so small and so compact, which is great, modern technology is wonderful, how come it can't just be built into the Kumar 7 just straight from the factory? Why not? I don't know why. Um, so that's a little bit of an annoyance and I would have installed, I would have gone through all that and installed this Venice Grand into the Kumar 7, but I would have had to wait who knows how long for this little tiny USB dongle to arrive from wherever it was being shipped from and then have to install the sound. And this video has taken long enough to produce already and the video itself is already long enough. Um, so I just didn't have the time. So if Kumar had made the update a little bit more user intuitive and more user friendly, I had to do a whole bunch of digging and research to figure out how the heck it was even supposed to work. Um, and then I finally went ahead and read the online owner's manual for the Kumar 7 and found out how to do it. So. It's not the best built-in piano sound that's in mine, and the update process to get a better acoustic piano sound into the Kumar 7 isn't as nice by any means as the way Viscount did it. So I think as far as updates are concerned and how to upgrade your instrument, Viscount wins hands down. That is so much better. As much as I love the Kumar, the Viscount wins on that regard. And you can also hear that the acoustic piano tone in the Kumar is lacking many of the really nice things that the acoustic piano tones in the Viscount had. The low bass on this sounds very digital. It honestly reminds me of the electric grand tone we heard earlier. And the treble has no sympathetic resonance, which is something I don't think I've ever heard in an instrument of this price class. The notes are all blending together because I had the pedal down, but I think you could hear the difference between this, which has next to no sympathetic resonance, and the Legend 70s, which has a lot of sympathetic resonance. When you hold the pedal down and play some notes up here, it's simulating the real life effect of the open strings resonating in harmony with the notes that you're actually playing, and it creates this echoey, reverby type of sound, which the Legend, uh, sorry, the Krumar 7 is not able to do. So that's the one acoustic piano tone on the Krumar 7. Now let's go check out some of the piano sounds on the Korg SV2. It has many more than just one. Unlike the Krumar 7, the Korg SV2 has a great number of acoustic piano type sounds. And also unlike the Korg, I mean, sorry, unlike the Krumar 7, Korg has put quite a bit of effort into making these instruments sound relatively realistic. But also like the Krumar 7, the instruments on here are not 100% perfect. But nonetheless, let's check out a couple of the acoustic piano tones on the Korg SV2. Let's try the alternate version of Piano Tone 1. It probably is like layered with strings or something, but it is not. We had some reverb laid onto that one. Let's just play a few chords on a couple of the other piano tones here.
The final sounds I wanted to talk about on all three of these instruments are the clavinet sounds and everything else on the instrument that I haven't already talked about. So for starters, the clavinet sound. On the Viscount Legend 70s, we have a dedicated module specifically for the clavinet, which is pretty cool. Um, on this module, you have your volume knob, you have two different types of clavinet to choose from, the different timbres, clavinet one, clavinet two. Um, you also have a mute button, which doesn't actually mute the sound in the way you might think. The original clavinet had a little slider on one side that would basically apply a set of mutes to each string, which would create a shorter percussive type of tone, and that is what this mute button emulates. And I've never seen any other digital piano that emulates that aspect of the clavinet, so it's clear Viscount has gone to many lengths um, to make the clavinet simulation be as realistic as possible. And then this row of buttons here basically allows you to change the pickup setting of the clavinet simulation. Um, with all of them off, you get kind of a thin tone and then by turning different combinations of them on and off you can get all sorts of different sorts of effects. So we'll go through a few of those um, and mess around with that but this is what the default n nothing lit up uh, clavinet tone sounds like. So it sounds pretty cool. And then if you hit this mute button, you'll hear what I'm talking about here with the, the muted. It doesn't have a lot of effect down in the bass, but up in the higher ranges, it's definitely muted. Then you have the, I'll turn that off now, the mute thing. And then you also have the different clabby tabs here that you can push and use to alter the tone. I've got brilliant me treble and medium push now and the tone is in fact very brilliant. If I turn off brilliant, it becomes less brilliant. We can turn off treble and only have the medium one on. We can turn on soft. Then we've got C, D, and A, B, which is basically changing what range of pickups it's using, I believe. You can have all of them on, and then you also have a second version of the clavinet timbre. which is ever so slightly different. All of the effects that are over here, you can then route over to the clavinet. So for example, if you wanted to take a chorus effect, turn that on and route it to the clavinet. You could do so, or you could use a wah sound that's very popular. So you have lots of control once again with the Viscount Legend 70s with the clavinet sound and it is I think one of the best and one of the most detailed clavinet sounds of any digital piano I have heard. For other tones in the Legend 70s, aside from the clavinet, there's quite a few different ones and most of them are found in the sound collection module. Um, you have a wide array of pads. You have, uh, let's see here, you have 11 different types of pads. You have 11 different types of strings, 11 different types of choirs. You have 17 different types of basses. You have 16 additional types of keyboard sounds, including, uh, what are they called? I forgot the word now. What's the word I'm looking for? Accordions. You have accordions in here in the keys section. I don't know why I forgot that word. Uh, we've already talked about the organs, but you've got 15 different organ sounds. You also have 12 different bass sounds, and you, in the others category, you have 16 different others uh, sounds, including glockenspiels and things of that nature. So let's just briefly go through like one or two from each of these categories. You've got your pads, your synth type of pads. On the synth pads, these knobs here basically affect various sorts of controls you might find on a synth, like your attack, your release, and your filter cutoff. The filter cutoff is especially useful when you are layering with another 
sound and you want the synth to be quiet, instead of turning the volume down, you can use the filter cutoff, which I find to be much more effective. You've got a few different types of synths on here. Very resonant one there. Here is a, um, a few of the string sounds. On the Krumar 7, as always, we have one clavinet tone, but like the Viscount Legend 70s, we can actually alter the clavi tabs um, and change the settings of the pickups. And if I knew more about clavinets and I owned a real clavinet, I'd do a comparison between this and the Legend 70s and the real clavinet and uh, select all the same settings and see which one came closest to sounding the coolest. But I don't actually own a real clavinet. They're really tricky to track down and find one that's in good condition. But anyways, I diverge, I digress. The clavinet on the Krumar 7, let's check it out. So to access the clavi tabs, you push this button and hold it down and these buttons will light up and if you push it on and off, you get the bright strobe effect. Um, so basically you can use this to activate the clavinet tabs. Now we only have soft C, D and A, B lit up. If I push the clavier tabs button and turn off C, D, and A, B, I wonder what happens. Not a lot, really. We can go to um, treble. We can turn on brilliant. We can turn on C, D again. We can turn off Brilliant, and we'll turn on Medium, we'll turn off Treble, and we'll turn on AB, and actually we'll turn on Treble again. And since we're one step away from having everything turned on, let's just turn everything on and see what that sounds like. So that is the clavinet tone of the Krumar 7, and I think it sounds pretty good. I feel like it might be a tiny bit less authentic than the uh, Viscount Legend 70s. It sounds a little bit more artificial down here in the bass, very gritty, very gravelly, very, very grimy down here in the bass. But at the same time, I kind of like it. I think it sounds pretty cool. Um, and as a whole, I think the clavinet tone on here is very nice. These lights are very, very bright when you turn them all on, and it kind of makes it difficult to read the tiny text down here. But at once, if you're familiar with a real clavinet or you get used to what buttons do what, it wouldn't be difficult at all to know what type of sound you want just by what pattern of lights are lit up. So I think that's fine. As far as other tones are concerned on the Kumar 7, the only other one we haven't talked about yet is the vibraphone, which is right here. And there's actually a dedicated button specifically for the vibraphone, which is pretty cool. I forgot that. Krumar has put so much attention to detail into these sounds. For example, with the clavinet sound, because the real clavinet didn't have a damper pedal, the damper pedal didn't do anything for the clavinet sound, and because a vibraphone typically doesn't go below this, uh, this C, that's where this vibraphone bottoms off at. Um, and so that's the lowest note on the vibraphone, and the highest note I think is that one. I am wrong, it was up an entire octave above that, but nonetheless, this is the vibraphone sound. So you've got the built-in tremolo that's right here, and there's a few more nice attention to detail that Kumar's put into this. If you play the notes and hold the keys down like a piano, the notes don't sustain because that's not how a vibraphone works. To get sustained tones, you have to manually push the pedal down, which lowers the damper bar away from the bars. And when you let go of the damper, it kind of raises the pitch and alters it as the note ends, which is kind of like what a vibraphone will do. So 
So the attention to detail for some of these tones has been really, really nice. Um, and it's just been interesting to see the length that Krumar will go to to get a authentic kind of an experience. As, a, as, a, as authentic of an experience as you can get by playing a vibraphone tone on a digital piano anyway. As far as other tones besides this, like pads and strings, there's next to nothing. There's only one and it's found over here. It's on the pad button. So you can change the level and the blend of it. So if we crank up the blend and the level, we should be able to mostly just hear the pad um, by itself. So let's check that out. I find myself rarely, if ever, using the pad that's built into the Kumar 7. It would have been cool if there were different versions of the pad that you can choose, like a strings pad and a few different types of synth pads, but there's only one, and there's only one way to make it sound, so that is the only layerable, the only layerable sound on the Kumar 7, but pushing two buttons at once does not give you the ability to layer two different tones at once. The only tone you can layer on the Kumar 7 is the pad, which again is another reason why it has so much less functionality than the Viscount Legend 70s. You can layer any two tones you want, provided they're not within the same um, module. So, pretty cool. Let's move on now to the Korg SV2 and check out some of the extra tones that it has. And let me just say, it has a lot. On the Korg SV2, we have a few different clavinet tones and quite a few other sort of sounds. So we're going to take a look at some of the best that the Korg SV2 has to offer. Um, and let me just say that especially with the others category, the symphonic type of sounds, the Korg SV2 knocks out of the park. It is truly phenomenal when it comes to those sort of things. And I think out of these three, as far as the others are concerned, the strings, pads, brass sounds, and even some of the synth stuff, I think the Korg wins by a mile. But for starters, let's check out the clavinet sounds with the Korg SV2. There are, I believe, six of them, and we'll check out briefly all three of them here. The default one comes with a little bit of spring reverb on it, um, so we'll just run it how it is. You can use the damper pedal with the clavinet tones on the Korg SV2, as you can hear, and as you can also hear, the clavinet sounds in here are pretty nice. You're also not limited to the original clavinet's range, you can do silly things like this which of course are interesting. You also can hear that there's some little action noise and some key noise there, which I think for the clavinet is pretty cool, because um, I'm sure that would have originally had a lot of action noise. Um, we can go on to the third bank, I guess, of clavinet sounds. You've got two in here. This one's actually harpsichord, as you can hear. I forgot about that. The second harpsichord here is actually a sort of a muted kind of a harpsichord. With the clavinets out of the way, it is now time to check out the final leg of this video, which I think may very well be one of the best, and that is the other sounds on the Korg SV2. And strangely enough, for a digital piano that boots up on a Fender Rhodes type sound and has a vintage appeal, strangely enough to me, I find that its best sounds are actually located in the others category, where you find your symphonic strings and your synth pads and your synth lead sounds. Some of these are truly phenomenal and are some of the best sounds that I have found in any digital piano and they're not even the stage vintage sounds that the Korg SV2 is renowned for, um, which I think is very interesting and just, just odd, but yet I also love it. So let's check out the first sound in the others category, which is a uh, strings, symphonic strings pad, I guess we'll call it. And there's two variations of it. The alternate version is basically the same thing, but a little bit thinner and a little bit less detailed. So we'll check out number one uh, and oh boy, is it lovely.
The thing I love about this synth pad or strings pad is, I guess it's, is it a synth or strings pad? I mean, obviously it's emulating strings, but it's not like authentic strings. So it's synthesized, I don't know, whatever. The, the great thing I love about this pad, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to call it a strings pad, is that it sounds, not only does it sound really great, but it's really dynamic too. It's not just the same thing at different volumes. When you play it gently, the sound gently eases in. And when you play it hard, it's got a bite and a bark to it. That's really cool. Check it out. Like, that's just awesome. That's just super cool. And I absolutely love that sound on the Korg SV2. And the second variation of it is basically the same thing, a little thinner. But still also really nice. The bass seems a little fatter on that, which is kind of interesting. Um, the second sound in here, I actually forget what it is. I'm pretty sure it's a Mellotron type of string sound. At least that's the best thing I could think of this being. It doesn't really sound like a Mellotron, but it does sort of sound like a really lo-fi strings being recorded through like an old tape or maybe an old radio or something. It's kind of a neat sound. In comparison to that first strings pad, this one is almost ugly, but it has its own characteristic and I could definitely see it having a place in music. The alternate version of 2, if it's the one I'm remembering, again, there's so many different sounds on the Korg SV2, it's difficult to remember what is what because the same light can represent six different things. Um, so I think this one's a really beautiful synth uh, layered with a really beautiful strings pad layered with a really beautiful female vocal choir. Like that's just splendid. And like before we've already seen if we push this function button, we can come in here and we can actually alter these and we can remove different aspects of that. Which is a pretty nice feature. Um, number three, I actually completely forget what's on number three. So let's check it out again. That is a very ethereal strings uh, synth pad. I, why, am I, why am I messing up the word synth and strings today? I do not know. And then up here in the variation of number three is... is yet another synth pad. Hey, I used the right word that time. I don't really use these two, which is why I kind of forgot what was on number three, but I never forget what's on number four because it is absolutely stellar and I think might be the best sound on the entire Korg SV2. I'm going to play a little excerpt of Scarlatti's um, Keyboard Sonata K380 here. I'm just going to start off in the middle because the beginning of the piece works okay, but it's the kind of the middle of the first page where it really sounds good on the sound. So we're going to start there uh, and just play a little excerpt of it because that really sounds amazing. Listen to this. Oh, I forgot I had to turn the gain down. Whoops, hang on. Let me try that again.
the alternate version of four is also super cool as well. It's another super awesome symphonic sound that just is delightful. Take a listen. Like, that is just so much fun. That is, I can't even say enough nice things about that. That is so wonderful. Um, that is basically pizzicato strings layered with slow strings layered with a glockenspiel. You can alter all those in here and it's awesome. Five and six are more synth type sounds. I believe five has a brass sound, which I think is this one. And then the alternate version of five is a really cool synth. Which may sound very familiar to some of you. And then six is basically a synth lead up here layered with some kind of a strings down here. And that's the same for both of the alternate versions of six. And then for the alternate version of six, it's pretty much the same thing. And those are all of the others category on the Korg SV2. Thank you very much for listening to all of these incredible, incredible sounds on all three of these digital pianos. I just wanted to end the video with the Korg SV2 and all of these amazing sounds because these orchestral sounds on here are absolutely amazing. And honestly, every time I turn on the Korg SV2, I come to these just to listen to how amazing this is. This is. I mean, how much cooler do you get than this? <laughs> that you all have enjoyed this long, drawn-out, in-depth video between the Viscount Legend 70s, the Krumar 7, and the Korg SV2. Like I said earlier on in the video, this wasn't really meant to be a competition between the three to see which one comes out on top, because although some excel in some areas that others don't excel in, as we saw, um, they all are amazing, and they all are incredibly well-rounded digital pianos that all do something amazing, and all have something that makes each one special. Um, and so I think that although you wouldn't really need all three like I have here, I think one would certainly fit the needs for many, many people. Um, so perhaps you might choose the Korg SV2 for yourself, or the Legend 70s, or the Krumar 7. Whichever one you choose, it will certainly suit you well, and it will most certainly bring much happiness and enjoyment, um, and very, very fun. That's the big takeaway from these, is they're a lot of fun to play. They're incredibly high-quality instruments that are a lot of fun to play, and whichever one you chose to get, I'm sure it would be really, really wonderful and the right pick for you. So this video was really made to help people who are interested in purchasing a SV2, a Krumar seven or a legend 70s for themselves to choose which one they would want because as i've said they are quite similar but they do slightly different things and they do slightly different things better 
So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video and it has been helpful for you. If you did enjoy this video, you might wanna go check out my channel if you're new here. I've got lots of really cool videos of acoustic pianos, digital pianos, uh, the vintage versions of the instruments these are trying to replicate, like a Fender Rhodes and a Worley 200 and things like that. I've got all kinds of cool videos on my channel about instruments like that and much, much more. So if any of that sounds cool, you might wanna think about subscribing and don't forget to join that Patreon page if you so please. And if any of that sounds cool, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.